All right, it's August 15th, 2023, 7.30 p.m. I'm gonna call the uh, meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Members present are myself, John Tehan, Bob Shabbat, Andy Marco, Doug Roberts, Becca Sanofsky. Uh, I'm gonna seat the uh, alternate of Michael Johansson for uh, Joseph Hall and uh, other, our other alternate, William Bennell is present as well. Which uh, there's no applications for receipt tonight, no public hearings tonight, no new business tonight, which brings us to item F, unfinished business item uh, one, seasonal outdoor dining regulations. This is um, one that's been pending for a bit. Um, it's been discussed a couple of times, and it's in response to uh, post-COVID legislative changes, which require that towns allow outdoor dining associated with a restaurant by right. Um, so this language attempts to um, just sort of codify what the state has said um, we have to allow for. Um, we had some comments previously, particularly about how the parking um, allocation would work on site with, with the addition of an outdoor patio. Um, so with the exception of uh, one word that I that needs to be removed, uh, C is newly proposed from the last time you saw this has been essentially revised um, to reflect that discussion and, and make the review um, require that no more than 50% of the total parking on site be um, obligated for the outdoor parking or outdoor dining. Um, everything else has kind of remained the same and um, aligns with what we would require based upon the public act, but also what would be required for department reviews from fire marshal um, building Eastern Highland, et cetera. This is a draft, so it, the, the next step, if you liked this or if you thought this was fairly close, would be for us to do the referrals to CROG and schedule a public hearing, which you could then you know, further modify. Um, so we would be looking at uh, September meeting, second meeting in September for a hearing. Can CROG get back in time? Um, yes, I, I would expect that we could get it for that second meeting. I, I think this is good enough to CROG referral because at the public hearing, with you know, obviously we're going to get the public's input and modify accordingly. You know, if your input that uh, is good on this or sees any issues. Yeah, Walter, I don't know if you saw the, the parking thing yes, the first time was. Kind of long discussion on that. Yeah, I like the wording on this parking reg a lot better than what we had before. Um, I'd say, yeah, let's go ahead and refer it to Croc. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'll second that. Yeah, well, well, let's see. Anyone else on the commission have any? Uh, I just saw the nine o'clock uh, cutoff time. Uh, that in concert and how bad to its work. Is that what we do now? Like Black Hilltop? Do they, they have a nine o'clock in time? I I don't think I mean, there's any specifics for just the outdoor eating because it's not well, sure it's, music out there too. So I'm just kind of wondering <clears throat> is this a, is this restricting what they do? Not and I'm not for or against just saying does that change how they're conducting themselves today now? I don't know. I can't remember if they do anything after nine o'clock or not. If they close at nine. Do they close at nine? Well, there's this thing. Well, I saw one was out there on the patio. I think it was nine o'clock. Yeah, I was wondering about the weekends. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, the kitchen closes at nine. We were there, um, Bob, you and Christine and I, and a couple of the other folks were there, and uh, they closed the kitchen at nine uh, a couple weeks ago. Stop, does it? I'm sorry? The music doesn't necessarily stop on the patio at nine, does it? Well, yeah, there there wasn't any music that night that we were there. I was there last Friday as well. Um, they did have music, but we left before nine, so I couldn't tell you. 
just kind of wondering. Well, music's another item. Yeah, music's, music's another a, issue, and, and it says here that they'll need a permit for that. Where, so. where do we address that? So I just, I'm, I'm, I should know man. that, but I don't. That's, that's the only thought. I mean, but this might supersede that, but maybe not. When we say you can't do it after nine o'clock, just because the kitchen's closed. Does that mean everybody's got to leave? You can't come out? Can't be on the patio after nine? Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense, but it depends when the bar closes. I get, well, that's what I'm saying, but that's that's not what this says. No. This says the outdoor seasonal dining ends at nine. I don't know what that means. Um, and I'm not saying it should be a different hour. So this is dealing with accessory uses to restaurants. So it's not going to sort of in the reverse way, regulate some of these other items. If you're not sure if it should be nine or 10 or eight, we could change it to 11 because you could, you can go from 11 during the hearing to 10 or to nine or eight, but you can't go. If everybody shows up the hearing and says nine is way too early on a Saturday, you can't uh, start start higher. Right. Well, yeah, I'm just, yeah. And I'm just yeah. like seasonal. Yeah. I, I mean, if, if you're if, if refusing Hilltop as an example again, that that patio is not. I mean, it isn't temporary for this. It is really part of the restaurant. It, it has been. And it has been. Right. But I mean, if yeah. somebody would say it's still seasonal because you're not going to they don't open it in the winter. So. It's not open 365 days a year. So thinking of people, yeah. how, how how closely uh, um, many members of you know, many residents look at our warden and, and, and uh, just something that struck me. What does the Eagle do? I don't know. I haven't been down there a long time. They're, they're out there, Dad. He's kind of slammed up against the side of the building. It's yeah, it's more like a smoking area. Yeah, they're, 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 <laughs> there's seasonal <laughs> dining. And yeah, then you have a willing and Pete, so they have some outdoor dining there. But that, but yeah, they, they wouldn't be operating real late. Okay. Uh, right, uh, you're right. But they, right. they, they do. They, uh, but uh, but I, I think we. There's no harm in starting at eleven. Yeah. And listen to what listen to what people I mean, say I, in the hearing. And I yeah. think for most people that for music, that's it. probably too late. Really, I mean, I. I I, I, kind of, I don't know what we say about that. Now. It's all it always permit. seems to end around like 10 o'clock. Oh, my, right. Special yeah. permit from Blythe yeah. Entertainment still. Like, right. So this wouldn't, this is just saying that the hours of operation of the patio will not be on that. So right. as of now, yes, 9 p.m., it, in theory, would all shut down. If you change the hours to 11 o'clock, it wouldn't then give someone who had approval to do live entertainment that said it had to end at eight or nine, the ability to Correct. carry on. Okay, that, that's a, yeah. So I'm just thinking that, that thinking about a business owner, you don't I hate to make regulations where people are almost immediately in violation of them. Yeah. Because it sucks to dilute the, the, the strength. Of in, in other words, if the kitchen closes at nine, you have people order food at, at 20 of. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, they're going to be there till 10 o'clock. And then no, right away, they go, well, how do I comply with this? Yeah. I stopped serving food at eight on the patio, and that doesn't make sense. Really. So let's start with a later. I recommend we start with a later time, and then we can always dial it back. All right. Yeah, we could always reel it back in. I, I agree with Walter. I think 11 is probably a, a decent time. Yeah. And then, then we'll hear what the public has to say. And uh, yeah. right. You know, hopefully, yep. I can do it. So, all right. Thank you. That's all I can. Any, anyone else? Yeah. Probably need a motion to move this to cry. You're going to make the motion. Uh, I move yeah. the seasonal dining regulations proposed. This commission be moved on to Krog. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. With this brings us to uh, item number two, accessory dwelling unit regulations. So uh, this is another one that was born from legislative changes um, as required by Public Act 2129 in conjunction with the Board of Selectmen, we opted out of the provisions, which means that all the requirements of that act do not apply to us. Um, 
but there are still some changes that we've talked about that don't go as far as that act, but do move the needle somewhat on the accessory dwelling unit regulations. Um, so we reviewed at the last meeting a few examples of accessory dwelling unit regs. One of them was Tallinn, one of them was Mansfield. The consensus, at least in, in my takeaway, was that overall the commission liked the setup of the Tallinn regs, but also liked the um, protections provided by the deed restrictions in the Mansfield regs. Um, so the, the revision that's in front of you now sort of marries those um, and includes all of the requirements to alignment basically in some of the stuff that we already had, but then also um, this, if you turn to the second page, the new section, which is owner occupancy required, is, is the language more or less. It's, it's been simplified and, and clarified uh, somewhat from what is in Mansfield because it's a little bit complicated, but um, it's what requires a deed restriction be placed on the property that the owner be on in one of the units. Um, we, we ran this by Howard and Sage, and this was originally contemplated. To, I wanted to verify and he, he feels that it is enforceable and, and would be likely more enforceable than just a standard violation of the zoning regs. Um, the, so beyond the enforcement, it, it creates a situation where the property can't sell um, with multiple occupants. So if you buy a property and you have the house rented and you have the ADU rented, and then you wanna sell it or, or remortgage it, that title search would pick up the restriction. And at that point, in theory at least, um, if the owner was not on the property, it would be another opportunity for compliance to sort of happen naturally. Um, so that's kind of where this language came from. Question, where it says um, on A, uh, Occupants of either dwelling unit shall be the owner of record of said dwellings or heir. Does that indicate that the heir has to be uh, the resident SP on site? Yes. Okay. It's, not, it's not the owner of record. If they left it to somebody, they have to live there. That's how I read this, right? Right. Good. Okay. Mike, in the, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Easier. Okay, Mike. Mike, in the um, in the current regs, uh, it talks about in law apartments, um, and, and you know it seems like that's you know within the same home. Um, I don't see anything around those in the accessory dwelling unit regs. Does that mean that we're outlying in law apartments? Like if I wanted to turn my basement into an in law apartment, uh, I wouldn't be able to do that. Are you ready? You would be the same thing. Yeah, the in law apartment is a is a sort of an old term for an accessory dwelling unit. Um, because as we move the reg to where this is sort of taking it, it wouldn't need to be just an in-law that would live there, right? Because as the owner, you could have an accessory dwelling unit that you could rent to a non-related person. So um, whether the accessory dwelling unit is for someone you, you know, like an in-law or, or someone that, that you don't know, wouldn't matter. All right, but but what I'm, my question is though, the new reg, the proposed regulation, appears to uh, contemplate uh, a separate building. So, is there still a facility in this proposed regulation to allow me to turn my my basement of my existing building into an in-law apartment or a, or a, a, an accessory dwelling unit? That's addressed in K. Yeah, read item K. Oh, sorry, maybe I had to go to page now. But you're correct in J, J and K. You're you're correct in in reading okay. that this reg as proposed does not prohibit a detached accessory dwelling. Unit. The the current reg that we have would okay. the public okay. act is yep. one of the things that they suggested. So this wouldn't this would not prohibit that. So no. Okay. Would you All right. Thank you. For a garage Thank you. Or yep. That would be exactly allowed. Uh, under the 7705 separate family quarters, 
What is the problem with a separate outside entrance? I, Rebecca, I think you mentioned that, that. That's what I was going to ask about. D says nothing on the front, but in nowhere does it say that that accessory dwelling needs its own outside entrance. But it says that there shall be no separate outside. Why, why? On the front. I understand on the front. It just says front. But I worry that someone will, might read this and miss something and not put an outside egress for, on to that wherever that is that that should have or be addressed somewhere that that unit needs its own entrance so the the existing reg says there shall be no separate outside access and that is purely sort of with the old yeah. school thinking okay. of if it's an so, interior connection so it's now it just can't be on the front right and that that is really uh, the purpose of that is to prevent it from creating more of a duplex Okay, situation yeah. where you have a single structure with two units. Okay, that's so. Should that line or somewhere near there also say that it should have its own entrance for safety? They're thinking fire safety. Yeah, yeah. I am yeah. totally thinking. Yeah. You know, yeah. If you've ever been into some of the places in Stafford or mm. Royal Manic, they they chop those buildings up. You know, you get into a maze, and and that's where I come from in that quiet unit. Technically, by building code, you have to have two means of egress to meet the uh, requirements. Well, you can have them out of the main house and not out of the accessory dwelling. Oh, so like a slider on the patio and a uh, front yeah, door. Yeah, considered. But with the, yeah. if you have the accessory, yeah. then oh, you'd have yeah, you could. three it's entrances, good. perhaps. You know? Yeah. Now, just, just I haven't, haven't thought about this for a while. Now, in the event that the house, the, the way it's constructed or something, doesn't allow for a side door for whatever reason, mm -hmm. then you could go to the Zoning Board of Appeals and, and, and use that vehicle to say, look, my land doesn't really allow me. I need to put it on the front. Right. Yeah, I suppose, though, it, it was, yeah, you'd have to. Well, you know, it would seem unlikely that it would be, not be a land hardship and not a financial hardship, but that would be a vehicle for someone to explore if they don't the need. Um, ask. I, what I don't know is how the building code plays into this, right? Yeah. So whatever the building code requires is what they'll have to... I, I, uh, so, so indeed, if we just remove the first word, no... So it would read new entrances for an accessory dwelling unit may be added, may not be added to front facade of the principal building. That kind of takes the saying that, yeah, you're going to have to have a new entrance. I don't know. To me, no, just kind of throws it off a little bit. I don't know. Oh, you said take out no, no. Just put the word not. <laughs> well, or, or just new entrances for an accessory dwelling yeah. unit. Yeah. Uh, how about this? New entrances for an accessory dwelling unit may be added except to the front facade of a principal building. Well, do you want to allow it or do you want to require it? I would think I'd almost add, double check with the fire marshal that it probably should have one. Well, unless if he says, nah, it's not a big deal. I, I just, to me. There's a reason why you're saying you didn't want to. Why, why is that? I mean, if you what, what was the thought? No new entrances. Why? Why? No, you know, on the front, only only from an aesthetic perspective. Now it looks like an apartment. A duplex. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. so we can really what I think you're contemplating is if there should be language that says that an accessory dwelling unit shall include a separate outside or direct access from the outside or whatever. Yeah, right. except on the front of the building. Yeah, what I'm trying, what I don't know is if there's a situation where where that zoning reg creates a building code problem yeah. based upon how a particular structure is. And I don't know if you had like a, a single entrance and or if you had maybe, I don't know, raised ranch or something where you had one door in and the lower level was one, you know, basement unit. How do you create that separate outside? I don't know. It's a building code thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would think it would be dependent on if the raised ranch is a fully, it shouldn't be a sub basement. The basement should be right. all the way down, so it should be able to put a door in. I grew up in a raised ranch, and mm -hmm. we just, our second exit was out the garage. 
Because there was always that into the graduates, the lower level. Um, I think a split level home into this that split level, like a true split level, it has all the funkiness to it, but a hill might be your issue with an outside entrance. My opinion, it shouldn't matter. Somebody's taking a, a ranch or a cape and converting it to a duplex to make an accessory dwelling in it, and they're going to add another front door to it. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not if the front door is already in the center of the building. Okay, I move both of them. So. But it doesn't. Yeah. I mean, like, does it matter? I mean. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They got the house is the main entry door. You got a side garage door. It's two entrances into the house on the front. What if one of them was actually an entrance to your ADU and the other one was the entrance to your actual? Yeah, but you're not adding a new one. You're not adding a third. Like, this is a brand new little hole in the wall. This thing still needs to meet all building codes and everything. Yeah. You're putting it up and so forth. I, I'm, not, I'm not the aesthetics police. Somebody wants to make the front of their house look funny. That's, that's, yeah, okay. that's their business, I guess. But the uh, mm -hmm. you have to think long and hard before doing this anyway, what you're doing to the value of it and mm -hmm. so forth. But I I don't know. I feel like being the door cop. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> There are legitimate reasons people want to do this and come so forth. You have to keep an yeah. family age your family yeah. member. Yeah, cool. yeah, so I was thinking about that too, about how what we do to students in today's university even are even able to work their way through college anymore. I mean, does uh, are these small units are they even popular for students? I mean, how many? Uh, there was a pretty big article in, in yeah. AARP just put out on well, the subject and, and then everything, and uh, they 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 do rent them like that. Yeah. Uh, there, there's various there's avenues, sure. you know, for it, but. It just seems there's a lot of people that use the term. A lot of people want to age in place, so having well, right. that, like that, this, that, you know, I'm a, I'm a big supporter of that. I, think, yeah. I absolutely believe in, in people being able to stay in their homes as long as possible, and particularly as you get less ambulatory, a different different type of arrangement could be very beneficial. Yeah, and they, a lot of guys allow you to stay in your home. And they have the whole pro and con thing yeah, and yeah, the concerns yeah. people have on the whole concept of it. But you know, there's a lot of pros. There are. Yeah. I'm just kind of curious yeah. how many students actually. I mean, I see students like to rent houses, but they seem to be able to afford some pretty nice houses for rent. I'm wondering how many of them just mm -hmm. back when I was young, students rented rooms all the time. You know? Well, you'd rent a place in Woodhaven where you could have a party and everything. Yeah, right. Bother you. Yeah. Rent a time. room in somebody's yeah. house on, uh, you know, Ball Hill Road or something. Mm -hmm. I don't like I go over so well, but. Well, these could help us with affordable housing. Well, and I thought that was an interesting observation. How, how do they count toward, toward that? Uh, they provide housing options which are more attainable, but unless it they were, count toward our total, unless they were deed restricted, right? And it's quite possible that people that have their family living there would. Would deed restricted, and I know that there are circumstances where that's happened. Most but, people are going to get as much money as they can, right? You know, rent yep. it out. They're not going to deed restrict it. Yeah, I mean, it, to build a detached accessory dwelling unit, in like you're you're probably still looking at two hundred thousand yes. dollars. Yes. Yeah, right. It's so it, cheap. right. Yeah, and so you know, but but if if that allows you to to reduce, you know, a family member on a, a separate piece of real estate or allows you to right. care for somebody. Yeah, right. That's that would be the idea. So there's yeah, there is value, but creating it brand new. 
is not uh, achieved. Check the price is like three thousand square feet. I mean, the accessory is that. Is there a limit on the size of them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it wouldn't be one bedroom kitchen and bathroom and a living room. Thousand square feet or that that would be huge. Area. That would be huge. I have a three bedroom house and I have under a thousand square feet. It's the lesser of a thousand more forty percent. Um, so the other three hundred thousand square foot house is yeah, thousand <laughs> 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 Well, holy cow! Yeah. <laughs> one no more than one bedroom has yeah. one elevated no, kitchen. Here's here's a, a way to look at it. Might not be good. What if somebody builds an ADU so that they can live on a single floor, you know, retirement yeah. layout? Yeah. And then rents their house like Absolutely. four or five students. That would probably be doable under these regs. It yeah, it would be. I don't know if it's you can stop something great thing stop something. to have happen. Well, I think the important thing is that the owner is there to police it. Right. And that was something that most you know, most owners aren't going to want to sit there and have like a party of the police called and then deal sure. with that because that, that's not going to go over too well. I suppose that would affect yeah, the park of the, the you know the existing house because usually these kids come in that you know if there's five renters there's five cars. I assure you, people have been violating these rental things all over town for years. You know, this is there's, there's people renting the students now. They're short of renting the non-family members now, whole houses. You know, and, and so just keep that in mind. It's all happening already. Hey, Mike. Um, on the second page, towards the bottom, um, seven oh seven oh five oh two, paragraph A. Subparagraph uh, V, uh, mm -hmm. these restrictions should not be modified or removed without the consent of the town of Mansfield. I think mm -hmm. we want to change that to Wellington. It's kind of reduce your workload, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, they won't care. So something else that kind of um, plays into this is that um, the codification project, which we talked about, which is kind of going through the regs, getting them all um, reorganized and posted online with the town's ordinances, et cetera. So that project is set to begin uh, October 1st. So I have to provide copies of all of our regulatory documents on October 1. So any regulation that's not adopted basically then is sort of gonna get hit on, put on pause for a fair amount of time while they organize and analyze because we can't be modifying things um, <clears throat> while they're looking at it. So, you know, this is something that I think would, given the amount of public input we've had previous, would be good to have in that transmittal. I think thinking the same along the same lines as the hours of operation with the understanding that you can dial it back um, or, or further modify, but to get it in for the review, because this would also obviously go to Prague, um, you could modify D uh, to say that accessory dwelling units shall include a separate outside entrance not located on the front facade of the principal building. Between now and the hearing, I can talk to the building official to see if he has concerns about that creating some circumstance where, where someone is either violating the building code or violating the zoning regs, and, and we can see what that brings for the hearing. Um, it's a you know it's an option. If you're not if you don't think it's ready, then that's fine too. But well, I like the idea of requiring a separate entrance. I just don't I like think like Doug said, I don't really care if it's in the front of the building or not. I don't know if that that why I'm not sure that that really so you're saying like that, that part, that piece of that sentence could be taken out at the public hearing, the whole front facade part. Yeah, I just leave it in for now, so it's there, but it can be removed later. But like, but we can't add it in. Right, we can. We can. What is it? The sort of the rule we can make it less restrictive, but it's hard to make it more restrictive. Is that a well? Is that kind of what we go by? You can make it more restrictive. You can narrow the scope. I mean, it's it's not exactly based upon restriction, but it's the idea that 
when someone reads a legal notice and understands that you're creating a regulation about the following thing, you can't then make a bunch of modifications. So the intent of the notice is flawed. Sure, I understand. So some of this stuff, you know, like these items, we don't fundamentally change the scope of the regulation because you add or subtract an entrance language. If you were to say, we're going to remove the restriction on a thousand foot cap, that's a different story, right? right, that's right, right. Much... That, that changes the whole. Yeah, so this stuff is small enough that okay. we don't run afoul of a notice issue. That's all I got on that subject. Yeah, I don't have any more. Yeah, you're good. I'm good. Yeah, do we need a motion to send this to CROC? No, we have a motion. No, that was for the other. No, the motion was for the other uh, item. Oh. Yeah, so we we would have to make another motion to send this to CROC. Oh, okay. so you're going to strike D or leave it in? What, you word it. what would you prefer? I do. Yeah. Personally, strike it. I, 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 just don't, I, don't well, I, I like the fact that he put in that it should have its own accessory to our entrance. To oh, yeah. oh think, entrance. I think a separate entrance is important. Oh. So the where reasons. is the. But where, so. where it is, I don't think it I've got one question between B and C where B is describing what it shall have, and then C, it's just saying it shall include no more than one bedroom, but not saying you actually have to have a bedroom. So B, bedroom. B is language which is really focusing on making sure that you have a bona fide dwelling unit and not just something on a plan and then you cram as many people in it as you can because the dining room becomes like an extra bedroom right which like, is like, you know it's a huge problem in mansfield where their recs actually say like they want a place where you can have storage and where a family of four children can because they would just throw it down on the plan with no floor plan and then walls and partitions go up and now it's a four bedroom cubicle walls in there yeah. yeah exactly so um there that's oh, what b is and then c is meant to prevent anything more than a one bedroom because the, the public act limits it to a one bedroom. Okay. I, I kind of agree though that this is kind of unclear. By saying shall include no more than one bedroom, it seems that zero bedrooms would be an option. Perhaps we should say that you know the accessory dwelling unit shall be a one bedroom and no more than one bedroom or something along those lines. Only one bedroom. So yeah. um, shall be one bedroom only. Right. So it would I could strike and no more than. Right, no more than. And it would say accessory dwelling shall include one one bedroom. There you go. Okay. Yeah, what one bedroom, no more. Something along those lines. What do you want to do with the front door? What are we doing? I thought we were going to leave that in until we have public hearing and see what happens to it. I, I can go either way. Okay. I'm not married to it. Now it's yeah. Be okay. really interested to see what the public says. Yeah, they're proud. Yeah, that's All right. Good. All right. So add the language to say accessory to unit, dwelling units shall include a separate outside entrance not located on the front facade of the principal building. We'll refer that version and then you'll see what the hearing is. Yep. Okay. So that will replace, that language will replace D. And then we'll strike that line from C and A. Change the back of yeah. the yep. command so we will. Yeah. All right. I'll make a motion to refer our proposed regulation 7.07.05 accessory dwelling in the fixed rod. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Item three affordable housing plan. This is another one that 
then lingering. I know it's one that is, you know, massively exciting, um, but we, we do have to get it adopted. So we've gone through a couple of re revisions and tweaks. We had the listening session. We had some feedback. Um, so we're, we're at a point right now where the draft sort of reflects that and the draft that is in its current state is also what was reviewed by the public and, and was at least made available. So um, the next step would be, you know, essentially doing a final layout, getting it, you know, having it professionally laid out, and then um, the commission would adopt it. Um, there'd still be opportunity for minor revisions and tweaks if there were some language that needed to be clarified, but um, we wouldn't want to make wholesale changes and start adding in pages of, of stuff uh, at that point. So if we think that there's no reason to continue sort of um, letting it sit, then we can have that, uh, have it put together sort of formally and then bring it back for the commission to review for any final modifications and then adoption. You had a hearing on the plan. So unless you fundamentally change it, <clears throat> you wouldn't need to have another one. Statute doesn't require you to have one period. Um, we chose to, but you're not obligated. So the next step would be for that to get completed and then handed to you guys for a final review. But I just wanted to, to get your feedback before you let me further. I think we've had a pretty extensive discussions on some matter over and over again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not sure what more we're gonna add, but I think we should put it together and then have our final discussion. If any response to anything at that point, yeah, we'll okay. they want to tweak. Right. I agree. I agree. Okay, so what do we need to do with this one? It just yeah, there's no motion. Need a motion. Yep. This. We'll go. we'll get that all laid out in, in the final edits, and then when it's done, right. we'll bring it back. Sounds good. All right, brings us to item G: approval of minutes. I I couldn't find the minutes anywhere to review. Oops, okay. okay. In front of me here, I, I wasn't at the 20th meeting, but I was at the same. So, do we want to just uh, punt it to the next meeting so John has a chance to review them? They are, they are online. Mm -hmm. They both should be. And under agenda. Yeah. Okay. They're online on the uh, Town of Wellington website. Yep. Ah, sorry, I was on the wrong page. You want us to wait while you take a look through, John? Uh, yeah, can we come back to this or just take me a minute to go through? Sure. Let's move on to H and then we'll swing back to, to G. Item H, uh, Greg, uh, comment letters for under correspondence. Yeah, so um, we just had, I'm uh, trying to pull them up. Um, there's been some sporadic communication from progress with the uh, referrals. They, the, the, com the referrals that we make, they provide comment letters back. And so they copy us on those um, other town referrals as well. So I just, now that we're getting them all, I wanted to just uh, start including them. Um, so uh, just I'll go through them quickly. Um, there's a referral from West Hartford pertaining to uh, modifications of regulations for special de design districts pertaining to infill development. The town of East Granby is adopting text amendments pertaining to um, bed and breakfast, child daycares, churches, and director establishments, um, and associated accessory uses, um, as well as uh, a general reorganization of their zoning reg overall. Um, Canton is proposing to adopt regulations pertaining to agricultural buildings and structures of 1,000 square feet or less. Uh, Stafford zoning amendment regarding electronic message and changeable copy signage for municipal or civic engagement uses. And that's, that's it. That was the only uh, piece of correspondence that we had. John, you need more time? You're good. Um, I'm good. 
Okay, so that brings us back to approval of minutes. Uh, the minutes of uh, June 6th, 2023. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. June 6th, 2023. Oh, second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the minutes of uh, June 20th, 2023. I'm going to abstain because I wasn't here, but. I will abstain if you want. I'll move that we approve the minutes from the second from the June twentieth meeting. Second. Um, All in favor? Walter. Yeah. Aye. I'm just, yeah. Aye. 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 Okay. I, I just had a random. I'm sorry. I just the, the, like popped into my head. The accessory dwelling units have nothing to do with Airbnbs, right? No, there's language in there that says that they can't be rented for less than 90 days. Okay. Yeah. Right. I, it just I don't know why it popped into my head. I've been never saying ever. <laughs> All right. Somebody will try to pull it. Oh, I bet it's yeah. going on. You don't even know. Oh, sure it does. That's why it says that we. There goes. There yeah. goes my treehouse. I was building a treehouse out back for an Airbnb. Yeah. See what you did to me. <laughs> Only got a permit on said treehouse. <laughs> All right. So brings us to item I public participation. Any uh, any public comments? Any, anyone here in the room? No? Okay. Anyone online? Okay. Going to go to uh, item J, staff report and discussion. Item one, PZC, IW, uh, WA combined commission. Do you want to give us some yeah. background on this, please? So we are um, in a position now where we currently have two members on our inland weapons commission, one of which is in the room. Um, we, we at, at most, I think it's a seven member board at, at most since I've been here, we've had four. Um, we then went down to three and, and um, we're now at two. So technically speaking, we don't have enough for a quorum. Um, attendance is not an issue. Attendance is an issue across every board in, in every town. Um, but the, the, a little bit of a different animal with wetlands because an applicant in theory, though we don't have applications pending or anything like that, um, can effectively petition the state for review of an application if the town doesn't do what it is obligated to do in its review. And then the state can fine and, or assess fees to the town for any costs associated with the review. I'm not saying we're gonna get there, but um, there are several towns which have effectively combined their land use boards um, or planning and zoning in wetlands um, for a number of reasons. Um, this is not something that could just be done. It would likely require an ordinance, um, but sort of as, a, as, as an initial discussion point, um, and given that we had a meeting coming up and we don't have meetings currently happening for wetlands, wanted to at least have a discussion about that it would involve obviously this commission and, and in wetlands. Um, Nothing changes from a statutory perspective. You are wearing two different hats. Um, so there's there's no blending of process. It would essentially be um, similar to how the Wetlands Commission also administers the forestry regulations. Separate statutes, separate process, separate decision-making, just the same people. Um, so the hope is that we don't have any issues because we'll have more members. And frankly, just putting this on the agenda has generated a lot of energy around the subject and I think we'll probably be okay, but we do need to have a plan if we can't pull something together because we can't not have members on, on that board in particular. Um, so this was really just intended as a discussion point to bring it up as something that is possible in, in the universe. There's no, there's no plans in motion, there's no, there's no um, discussions that have occurred. This would be a, a lengthy process, um, but I wanted to at least bring it up. What does it do to meetings? 
That's my only question. Does it increase our meetings or does it make them the same too? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, so Mansfield is the closest town that has combined commissions. So their their uh, in the wetlands meetings happen immediately before planning and zoning. Same night, just that's how that's how yes, they they theirs are, are earlier. Um so it would if a if a wetlands meeting is an hour and planning and zoning meeting is an hour, I'm not it may not be two hours because Generally speaking, you're more familiar with an application by the time you have a planning and zoning review because you've, you've gone through that. But yes, for this commission, it would mean more. Would it increase the size of the commission? That is a little bit harder to answer because um, it would be done by, by ordinance. Um, and so there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. Uh, you, you could increase the size. Um, there's a, there's a different towns have gone about it in different ways towns will also do this if they have separate planning and zoning commissions and they combine them to one correct because they're you can't you're not going to have like a like a 16 member board correct? but um yeah it would be a long process um but mike um is the uh inland wetland uh right now an appointed position because we have to be elected on the pzc right yes so it's appointed right I don't like this. Yeah. That, it, it, was, it, it, it would almost seem like we would have to be sharing our responsibilities with an appointed, with a couple of appointed members. I, I'm not sure how that would work. It's not even that. It's just to, to me, it's best to have these separated. Because yes. You've got some oversight on one side, but when it comes to us, this is like looks like the fox in the hen house almost. Yeah, yeah. To me, I, I, I agree. it just doesn't. Yeah. It, yeah, maybe you could do it, but that doesn't mean it, it, it doesn't feel quite right. And then wetlands well, is first. Yes, yeah. yes. And you don't want the very people like making the wetland decision, like all of a sudden, like, you know, you're, right. yeah, you, you're, your heads, are, your, your mind's already three steps ahead of what you're going to be sure. doing, like, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, one of, one of the things that I've attended a lot of inland wetlands. And they're very thoughtful over, sometimes, you over, know, over the yeah. years. And I think to ask this commission to obtain the knowledge and information that is required of the inland wetlands is asking us to do twice of what we're asked to do right now. And what what also and, comes and it's more technical, yeah. I believe. No, I, I agree with you. And part of like what, what I'm thinking about, remember the truck stop years ago. Mm -hmm. Remember all the testimony and everything. A lot of it very good testimony mm -hmm. and, and well thought out. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. you know that you're gonna lose something there. Yeah, well, would, I think it's good to yeah. have that separation. Yeah, not check some yeah. 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 I don't know how you could review an application for in the wetlands and not be I'm just to make sure we're present, prejudging what you're bringing for yes, planning and exactly, zoning. How exactly, could you right. not keep it separate? Well, I, I just think yeah. there's going to there, there would be an awful lot of blowback Absolutely. from the yeah. public, and especially with social media now. Oh my God, it would be <laughs> unrelenting. Well, I think we do have to have a plan because if, if no one signs up, well, hopefully somebody does. You know, after uh, maybe they read some of the minutes of tonight, and I think we can yeah. find somebody without any gray hair. I doubt it. Uh, <laughs> 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 and I don't know. But I think yeah. there have been some folks that have reached oh, out to the to the uh, mm -hmm. board of selectmen. <laughs> So hopefully it isn't an issue, and yeah, it 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 is an additional level of complication, and not something that yeah I, I personally think is is warranted. But when you have a situation where you don't have worst case it goes to the DEP, they they render the decision, and the town gets yeah. charged for right. yeah. what they yeah. do. That's maybe the that's, worst maybe, case. Maybe that's not a bad. Well, thing. well, right. You call it a fine yeah. rather than well, well because it's not it's not the town will pay. An application fee. It's that deep. Will do whatever it needs to, and whether that charges for the hire a technical person or have an attorney. I mean, the, the 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 attorney for the state or whatever had to review our forestry regs, and it took them months just to be able to sign off on their required revisions to our forestry regs. Really? So, like, 
I don't really want to be sitting for un, an undetermined amount of time hoping that DEEP will issue a favorable approval on someone constructing a house in an upland review. No, area, no, right? of course not. Well, I'm hoping to yeah. step up and like, you know, yeah. put, put some new life in that commission now that people are leaving. Right. And you know what? A lot of people like to complain and say things that these are all volunteer positions. Come on. You know, there, there's yeah. big yeah. openings. Do it. Yeah. Right. And, Takes time though. It takes time out of your out, out of your month, out of out of your year. But a sign up is yep. a transfer station that you're looking for. Right? <laughs> I mean, I think. Yeah. Just... <laughs> but there's already yeah. stuff on the uh, on the on the town website and everything. So well, it's it's almost like yeah. put up or shut up. Really, mm -hmm. you know, it's a it's a, a harsh way to put it. But mm -hmm. you know, there's not. It's pretty easy to criticize, but yeah. I don't see a lot of people showing up. You're not part of the solution. You're part of the problem. Yeah. There was yeah. an article in the Connecticut Mirror this past week questioning whether or not um, town meetings are even an effective way of governing anymore, like in New England, because yeah. of participation. Right. So, well, yeah, you have a handful of people making decisions for an yeah, entire well, town well, when, when people don't show up. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's the founding fathers would love to hear that, wouldn't right. they? Yeah, and that's why. Well, you know, in Massachusetts, in Massachusetts, where I'm from, we had elected town meeting. You had to actually be elected in order to vote at town meeting. Any resident could speak, but the only people who could vote were elected town meeting members. And I liked that. I, I was I served in town meeting for years and uh it it uh, it worked yeah. well. Okay, you go to other states all, people look at New England as a model a local government of good representative government at a at a at a you know a low level. And Alice Jefferson did right. oh well all right, well, I, I guess my opinion is I'm not a fan of, of combining, wow. but I don't know how the rest of the commission. I, I, I agree, Walter. I wouldn't be a fan of this at all. Yeah. For a reason, it's worked for years. I think we need some people to step up and, and fill the vacancies. Um, so other than that, on a staff report, um, we are in the process of the, the scanning project is underway. So, um, how, what kind of progress you're making? So, they took 150 boxes, um, and they so they've given us our first two boxes back so we can review everything. Um, what's the damage level on the things they're scanning? Are they so we, we have tr gone through and pulled all of the destroyed documents from the files okay. because they, if it's dirt and mold like it can't be scanned um so that stuff has been removed um so you know we hope to get a significant chunk of the of the file scanned um we will hopefully have things it shouldn't take them too long to get through it um but the first box looks pretty good i mean they're literally going through folder by folder and unfolding every inspection report and every plan. I mean, anything that's in those, anything in the drawer they scan. How many years back? All of it. Jeez, they're going back. Pretty funky stuff in there. Yeah, that, and that's the problem. When, when I presented this to the Board of Finance, I said, you know, the issue we have is that if someone comes in and says, I have a bad foundation, I want to report it, I can't tell them who did because that stuff was not cataloged. Oh, okay. So it's just in a drawer, but it's not alphabetized or here's no. land use, here's building. So like I, unless I look through the 80 drawers of stuff that we've got, I don't know where it is. So this will allow us to, to see what we have and then move it over so that it can be publicly available. So we've got that. I, I talked to you about the codification, um, which will be starting in October. So um, that'll be something that is underway. We are, we had uh, in in early July, I think, uh, we had our 90% design review meeting with Croc for the streetscape stuff in South Wellington. Um, we received, so we had that. We've started the encroachment process with DOT. We've got our favorable recommendation from the State Historic Preservation Office because it's a historic area, so they need to do a review to make sure the project will not have impacts. Um, so that has been done. Um, so once we get the encroachment process completed with DOT, then we have our final design and we go to bid and construction. Um, it's the streetscape, so it's 
Uh, it's removal of the old sidewalks, installation of new sidewalks uh, with ADA, and um, basically from Hall's Pond to the school. From the school area. to the end of the mill. Um, there are also, uh, I think, three uh, pedestrian protected crossings. Mm -hmm. So there will be an island in the middle of the road in front of the school that if a pedestrian is crossing and someone is traveling at 76 miles an hour, like they seem to frequently do, there'll be a place there um, for a pedestrian, someone in a wheelchair, whatever, to rest or have a, a safe spot. Um, there'll also be the beacons, which some of which are already up because they were installed by DOT, the flashers. Um, so those will be there as well. What's that going to do to the milling project on 32 that they just did? It, so these should be constructed on top. Okay. And it will be after. So we we won't be doing any, I mean, other than doing pavement work right where they're happening, it's not going to require that we rip anything up. Um, and uh, ADA improvements to all the ramps, the sidewalks will be constructed so that they have a proper width so that um, people can walk on them. Um, so yeah, I don't know the total linear distance, but it'll be between both. And uh, it will also involve uh, hopefully the realignment of what is it Finney Hill extension. So you have that arm that comes out from yeah. the parking lot and then it comes down the so that whole piece and it's not wide enough for two vehicles. So the hope is that we'll we can remove that and then we're gonna we'll we'll add a legitimate properly designed entrance to the parking lot so vehicles will be able to come in and it it shouldn't if we can do the striping it'll go to a one way flow so that you don't have all these people competing between Penny Hill, the end school parking lot, and then traffic on River Road. It's it's a really uh, oh yeah yeah. <laughs> I get uncomfortable just making that entrance in a vehicle. I can't imagine if it was a bus or a fire truck or a snowplow or whatever. So <laughs> we're trying to move that stuff as fast as we can, but it's a process. Oh, was, was there a new assistant? Yes, I, I, I won't um, put her on the spot and make her speak or, or give any type of public right. presentation, but um, Evelyn uh, is our new assistant land use agent. Excellent. She started yesterday. Um, welcome, Evelyn. I, hey, well, uh, hey, Evelyn, welcome. We Thank you. We I, when I was talking to her, uh, Peggy's out this week, so I said, you can start when Peggy gets back or you can man the port on your own for the week. And she was more than happy to man the port. So um, uh, she's going to be getting rolling with everything and, and you'll start seeing her at meetings. But um, yeah, it's good to have that position. Filled awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else? That's it. All right, it is uh, uh, 828. PM meeting adjourned. Thanks, everyone.